Morning. Good morning. We are just up from the, uh, good Lord, forgot the name. Torxy. Right. Let's try that again. Morning. Good morning. We're just up from Torxy Lock. Sid, the swan, is beside us. Morning, And Sid. trying to get more breakfast. He woke me up. Well, he didn't wake me up. I woke up. I, I woke you up. You woke me up. Your alarm went off because we have to get up and get moving early this morning. Because we're on the, um, look, well, the lock keeper said we could stay on the lock landing because the boat's not due through till about, well, mid morning. So we did, and now we need to go. Yeah. So the alarm went off. I woke up, got up, went and started doing dishes and making breakfast and everything. And, uh, and there was a tap, tap, tap on the window. And I looked out and there said, it's like, hello, service, service. <laughs> breakfast is late. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just had another breakfast. Yeah, he said it was like fifth handful of food. George has been walked and everything. I went across and did some recycling. The recycling and garbage, if you ever end up on oh, this lock landing. Oh, you can uh, yeah, he's in a parking lot across the lock, and you actually are supposed to walk around the bridge. It does say unauthorized users, and I was like, well, I'm authorized. Are you? Sure. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> yeah, but nice little location. Castle yeah. not too far of a walk away. And I really like it here. We had an explore last time we were here, like almost a year ago. And um, so today we're going to carry on to the place beginning with S. Silisby. Okay. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's down that way. It's about five miles, so... Yes, yeah. most of which is a dead <laughs> straight line, <laughs> so that'll be good fun. Um, yeah, it's about, uh, what is it, halfway to Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. Uneven, I don't think, halfway to Lincoln. So, so yeah, we'll head over there. Um, it will be a relatively short cruise, a couple of hours. Yeah. Most of which will be spent trying to not run into the walls of a pretty much perfectly straight Roman-built now largely drainage canal. Good fun. Yeah. Did you say it was called the Foss Dyke? The Foss Dyke. Yes. <laughs> the Foss Dyke was driven and, and, and created by the Romans. This was like the canal. And it's remember, now part of the drainage system. I remember when we first did, um, we first moved on board and we like made our first few videos and we were on the Riverway navigation and we were like, this is the oldest navigation. All our comments were like, the Foss Dyke's older. So now we're finally here four years later. Yes. True. It is the oldest, the, the, the one we were on the way, it was the oldest of the British built, uh, natively constructed, not through, you know, foreign labor. This is getting confusing. Anyway, basically it wasn't the Romans what built it. This one, the Romans built so yeah looking forward to seeing it um although from some descriptions that i've seen it's like this stretch is kind of really just high embankments and you know um, so we'll see well it's a beautiful day it's spring and we're on new waterways so it's good yeah it's sad to leave sid he's just still looking at us yes he had bit me a couple of times but in a friendly manner <laughs> he's got a taste for blood mm. <laughs> All right. Hopefully not. <laughs> right, I'm going to get him a little bit more breakfast and then we're going to get going. Yeah. Drink your tea. It's too hot. It's too hot for tea. Just beyond the lock landing and surface point is a long line of private moorings on both sides of the navigation. After the private moorings there are some CRT visitor moorings first on these short pontoons and then along the towpath. Yeah, I'm 
I'm just up on the towpath, which is this embankment above the navigation. And it's really, really nice. You've got views out across, well, everything's really flat, so you've got views a long way. Um, We have a problem with our engine. That red light should not be on. So, good fun, as always. Uh, as we were driving out this morning, um, I didn't hear a noise or anything. I just noticed that there was a light on, which is the battery warning light. The battery warning alarm was not going on. Um, realized that something was going on because the tachometer uh, was not showing any sort of revs. While everything else, all the other gauges were turning on, the tachometer's uh, sitting at zero revs. And for some reason, the actual um, readout of the number of hours is stable. Normally that just blinks on and off and doesn't really actually show me anything useful. So now I know how many hours the engine's been running, but I'm out of tech. So I uh, looked inside at the engine and an alternator belt has blown, which probably happened not when I first started running this morning, but at some point, um, probably when I turned it on again to start uh, actually driving away from the pier. So, we have now got an alarm going because the battery voltage has dropped uh, enough that it's causing the alarm to hit. And that's warning me about the alternator belt going. So now I need to get somewhere where I can pull up while George is sitting here tied up. Joe is inside looking for our replacement alternator belts, um, which we know we have somewhere, but, <laughs> but they've been misplaced during the winter. Uh, yeah, not sure exactly where they are. So, look into that. Hopefully we'll find them. That's the old fan belt off of the starter motor alternator, uh, which is also the one that drives the main coolant pump, which is why the engine has shot up in temperature, and when we stopped the engine, everything gurgled like mad, because uh, we were actually at the boiling point of the coolant. It's fallen below that, but uh, yeah, just glad that didn't happen on the Trent. replaced but we still need to tighten everything back up and it was a mission to loosen it yeah. when your alternator belt looks like this <laughs> it's time to change it's probably time to change before it looks like that yeah no this is really my fault um, because of the rather considerable access difficulties of our second alternator and the way that the belts are connected, um, what I've done every time I've done an engine service is inspect them, tighten them, and just sort of make sure that they're, like, I couldn't feel any cracks or anything in them. All right. 
And it turns out that like if you run your fingers across this, you just you can't really feel the cracks except for where it's really bad. Yeah. So I just missed it, I guess. Um, I mean, the last time I checked it was before we took it in for servicing and stone. So it's been a while. It's been a few months. Yeah. So how often are you supposed to change them anyway, or is it just as long as they last? Oh, it's pretty much as long as they last. Like. Our engine, every engine manual is different. Some of them will, re will say, you know, do it every so many miles. Some will still say it, do it so many hours. Um, the problem really is just like, that's from Yanmar and it's based on how much it's running in like a generator, right? Yeah. Or, where, or in a tractor or whatever it's coming from. And so, we've, we've run ours a lot. <laughs> well, and the, but the thing is, is we actually haven't. Oh, compared to what a generator might do. Yeah, a generator yeah, might be running mean. 24 hours a day for years yeah. right and and so okay. we're you know we we put some engines on for a we put some some hours on for a boat certainly yeah. but but you know as a tractor's concerned it yeah it's out there all day every day yeah so so the reality is is that um i've always taken it as like i knew it was an eventual it was going to happen yeah um tried to make sure there was no oil on it tried to make sure they were tight enough you know and felt around to try and see if there was anything but but there's no access where i could actually you know visually see that this was beginning so luckily we had spares on board yeah and now we've got to replace the spares so that for next time we've got yeah some... and and it's the sort of thing like you can do it at anchor it's not a big deal like yeah because i'm like how lucky are we that this happened today yeah. and not yesterday when we were on the tidal trend and if it had happened yesterday We'd have just put an anchor down and dealt with it. Yeah, or pulled up to one of the wharves or whatever. Like, there's... but it would have been a bit more stressful than. Well, yeah, definitely, and there'd be more worry even when you're talking about tides that are not exactly horrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 uh, it's definitely something that that uh, um, is my bad. I should have probably changed them at least once, if not twice, during this time. Yeah, we've never changed it. Sure. So, um, so what, know. what happened? How did you know it had happened? Oh, yeah. So, okay. Well, it definitely didn't happen yesterday. I've, I've had this issue where we have a tachometer, and then underneath the tachometer, we have a little LED display or LCD display. And that's supposed to display like our total hours. That started going nuts, I think, a week before, after we got the boat. Yeah. Like, depending on when you turned it on, sometimes it would show stable, sometimes it would flicker, sometimes parts of the numbers would disappear. Um, you know, it's just been a continuous, I've ignored it because it's like, it's not, reliable. it's not reliable and it's not really very useful information anyway. The, the tachometer though, always tells me how fast the engine's revving and I'm always, you know, I'll always flash my eyes down and just check whether or not we're getting reasonable voltage into the battery. Nothing's dropped there, especially, you know, I check it when we first start up to make sure that it's charging. That's normally how I tell that the alternators working yeah right um there's also the temperature gauge that i always keep an eye on and uh and oil pressure is less of an issue but i still you know look at it just to see if it's going particularly high or particularly low because somehow you know something's opened up or whatever so that has... so a boat passed us a minute ago not this one but the other one and it was called Bojangles, and they were like, "We like your videos," and I'm like, "Great, this one's gonna be funny." And then I was like, "You're gonna stop to help us," but I was joking because it's all fixed. We, now. we fixed it. <laughs> this whole time, no boat's been passing, and then just as we fix it, everybody shows up. It's, oh, great! But yeah, so I got up this morning, started the engine like I normally do to warm it up. So you know, but I normally do a check in there, and it's like, okay, if I got you know, if I got anything obvious, well, yeah. there was nothing obvious. Then I started the engine walk George around, did all the sort of things and everything. I stopped the engine after we warmed up so we could film. And then I was just, you know, engines off and it's get ready to go, push off from the front, push off at the back. The alarm turns off as normal when I turn on the engine. It's just, you know, as soon as I got any revs at all, the alarm shuts off. Okay, I'm in drive, I'm going forwards. There's nothing obvious, but maybe 15, 20 yards later, I looked down and noticed that the battery light was, was still on and the battery light being on indicates that there's low voltage for some reason. So I was like, how the hell could there be low voltage? Well, I then revved it a little bit and noticed that the tachometer was, was sitting at nothing. Like, I don't know how I didn't notice it was sitting at nothing until 
you know, I just, I revved it and expected to see movement and there was no movement. And then I, and it registered that it was like, oh, it's at zero. Well, that's really, that's not good. That's not right. I puttered along until we were through all the boats because I didn't want to try and screw around with it while we were moving through all of the boats. So it yeah. just took over through there. Um, and, and when I got out past the last boat, I was like, okay, I'll rearrange everything and I'll get into a position where I'm, while I'm still driving, I'll be able to open up the back and look inside there. And that's when I saw this thing flipping around. It's like, oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> got on the radio, you're like, Joe, I've got a problem. And I'd seen him, I'd seen you like going in the engine and I'm just like, everything's okay. Just keep going. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> It'll all be fine. Why does he keep shutting that thing off and turning it on again? And, you know. Yeah. So then my thought my first thought because i didn't realize which belt it was we've got a secondary and a primary and the secondary and the primary the the primary one runs our um uh, well like it turns over the engine yeah sorry it doesn't turn over the engine the engine turning over turns the alternator that alternator drives the starter circuit and then the secondary one drives the larger alternator which drives the the um uh, lifestyle batteries. Now our batteries are kind of synced together. There's a there's a, a relay in there that turns it off once you've been running far enough, and then it all goes into the domestic batteries. But, but it doesn't go the other way. No, but I but I like the thing is is like I'm looking at here and I've got 14 volts showing for the starter. So I think. I'm trying to figure it out and it's like I've got a battery warning now the battery warning is only for the starter battery so the starter battery must be losing voltage but the gauge that shows voltage is showing higher than I would expect if I'm just running off the battery well it started dropping and at first it was it wasn't so I just I, I was like I'm looking at all the signals going I know an alternator boat belt went I'm not sure whether or not it's the one for the domestics or it's the one for the starter I can't run in and while the, driving the boat or, you know, or just floating out there and, you know, and, and check the, the battery monitor to see whether or not it's the domestics that are going. So, so I'm like, okay, I don't really have enough hands. <laughs> so, so I'll pull to the side, I'll get Joe on, and then I think we'll keep moving while I go inside to check what's happening. So I get inside to check the voltages and I'm like, oh, the domestics are at 100. So the domestics are getting power off their alternator and that really must have kicked in a little bit before or something because all of a sudden we we got enough power in there that it went to 100 percent and and the battery monitors are doing their thing so so you know there's no overcharging so i'm just sort of i'm looking at the numbers going well from everything that i've got here the domestics are getting power that alternator must be working so it must be the one for the domestics and then just it, as you were yeah it must there. be the one for the starter battery yeah. oh good the wire's going off I was like, what that? what's that noise <laughs> yeah and and all the time i'd been taking a look at the temperature gauge and it looked like it was okay yeah. but um but then the alarm starts going off i get outside and it's like nope temperature gauge is rising battery voltage is dropping um we need to get to the side so yeah. we, so we found a place where we could pull over luckily on this stretch we could have probably pulled over anywhere yeah like it's you chose a bit where there was less um foliage yeah but even reeds. so it wasn't ideal because um we got one of the chains in but then we had to use a pin at the other end and it's all stinging this <laughs> yeah, stung my finger stung. and george was just an angel because when i was walking he was really pulling the lead and i was like there's got to be pheasants or birds something around here and so we got him off the boat and he just sat down and like, yeah. it's like he knew that well, we he... thought he'd be chasing pheasants or something. Yeah, it's like he knew that he had to behave. But luckily, well, luckily, once we got to the side and I got the rear open, it was like, it was really obvious that it was the starter <laughs> battery one. Once the board that covers our engine comes off, there's lots of light that can get yeah. in. Normally it's like I have to lift it up and then it's blocking a lot of light. It makes it quite hard to see. Okay, but that belt, as well as turning the starter alternator, it turns something else? It turns the the coolant pump. Okay, so, so it's the coolant pump, the, the alarm was for the battery losing um, voltage. Yeah. As the battery is losing voltage, that's because the alternator is not driving any power into the battery. The yeah. battery is continuing to be used. It's drawn on a small amount um, to, to run the uh, glow plugs for the engine. So the engine's able to keep turning as long as the battery 
still has some voltage in it. Well, our batteries, is, as I understand it, the way that they're hooked up, eventually it would drain the starter battery and then it would start, it, it would drain the starter battery, it would drain the, the uh, bow thruster battery, and then it would eventually start draining our uh, domestics. Basically, it's all happening at once, but, but you know, we're kind of losing power from the lead acids and, and the, uh, the, the whole thing will start going. So, so um, meanwhile, the alternator for the other side is putting bit power in, but, but that VDO must have thrown so that we're getting power into the domestics, but not getting power, not getting charge being put into the starter battery. Um, but at the same time, that means the coolant pump stopped running. And when the coolant pump stops running, the engine starts heating the coolant that is just sitting in place within it. And it, that can't then make it out to uh, interface with the skin tanks. So then the whole thing just starts to heat up really fast. Yeah. So when we actually stopped, you could hear it boiling, which yeah. is just really unsettling. Yeah. It's like there's all this gurgling noise. And I looked at the temperature because you have to turn the key. You can't turn the engine on, but you have to turn the key till there's enough power. The alarm starts going off. Now you can see the temperature gauge runs. And it's like, oh, it's just at, you know, 100 degrees Celsius. So it's like it's at boiling point. Um, so we got the fan that we use to move power or move air around in summer out and, you know, pointing that at the end. And we let all the water, the hot water out of our taps. Yeah, to drain the calorifier because the other thing that the cooling circuit is, is connected to is the calorifier. So by, by at least doing that, we gave it a little bit more ability to just radiate out into the cold water that would then be pumped into the calorifier. And changing the belts is a pretty easy job if you can access all the little adjustment bolts that you need to, which is Which, which is, is really the problem, like, because you get the engine the way you get the engine. And, and ours, for instance, the, um, the, the second alternator is a, a retrofit. The first, the first, the main alternator for the starter battery is from Myanmar, and and um, or sorry, Barris, and it like shipped with the the engine. The second one was made as a, a Liverpool boats added adds it on as an option when you get the thing. So they're different setups with completely different bolts. One's got 13 mil and 17 mil, and the other one's got 12 mil bolts, and neither of them is set up to make it sort of easy to adjust and they're in a weird and place. And you're doing it on top of a hot engine. Yeah. So what I really need is an adjustable length Allen key that's on a socket set, which I don't think there is such a thing. <laughs> and yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a goofball situation, but it's done. You know, we'll, we'll be getting replacements for these real bloody. We've done about 15 minutes out of Torxie, so now we've still got an hour and a half to do. So yeah. I'm going to get George on the boat and sit on the boat, I think. Okay. Just in case anything else goes wrong. From our Nicholson's guide you can see just how long and straight the canal is and with the banks being so high there isn't an awful lot to see from the water. When the Romans built the Fosdyke navigation about 2,000 years ago, it was most likely used for transporting goods like salted lamb to Lincoln. After the Romans, it's thought that the navigation was probably left to silt up until Henry I ordered it to be restored in about 1121, and then over the next 500 years it was neglected once more. It was restored again in 1671 and in 1741, and then in 1817 steam packet boats were used to carry goods and passengers along the navigation once more. Unlike many other waterways, the Fosdyke didn't close in the 20th century and continued to carry grain traffic until 1972. Bye.
got to be pretty brave or pretty stupid to try and put a beanie on a walrus. It's just like, can you imagine walking up, you guys walking up to you, a field of walrus, just, just hold still, buddy, I just want to put this hat on you so I can get this up. Oh my god, I'm skewered on two teeth. <laughs> These houses mark the outskirts of the village of Saxelby. It's nearly time to moor off, and only an hour or two later than we expected. some exertion to do the it wasn't so much exertion as it was just bending into funny every time you gotta work on the engine you gotta bend into some funny position and when the engine is cold that's okay when the engine has gotten as hot as it did even though we were able to get the, the whole thing kind of cooling down relatively quickly uh, there's these problems like there are some places where there are some brass protrusions on one side and those nuts get way hotter than the rest of the metal so like i'll put my foot down and i'll be like yeah that's okay i put my knee down through the jeans it's like oh it's warm it's it's warmer than i'd like it to be it's a bit uncomfortable but it's not painful and then i slip a little bit to one side a couple of those little brass things come into contact with skin or denim and it's like ouch <laughs> So, I got a lot of little burns, I got a lot of little scrapes, I got places where the Allen key slipped because, you know, the bolt's a little stripped and things like that. And I, yeah, I, I crack knuckles into places and yeah, so I just, I, I got lots of little sores. But I'm just glad. Not, not like weeping sores, but like sore, bits. sore places. I have, put, I have bits that are sore, my bits are not sore, I have sore bits. <laughs> I need sorbet. I have I said sorbets. I'd, I said I'd walk and get Michael an ice cream. Yes. Um, <laughs> She's committed to that, which is good. Um, so yeah, the rest of the trip after the the uh, engine was, maintenance was basically one big straightaway. Yeah, it's really weird because I'm like, oh, I really like it here. I really like it here, and I'm looking around and I'm like, it's just a flat. Like for a lot of it, you can't see past the big steep embankments and. I'm like, why do I like it so much? Oh yeah, the sun's shining. Yeah. <laughs> it's spring. Because like, obviously we all missed spring last year because it was the very first lockdown. Yeah. So. so we've gotten, you know, there's trees are blossoming, little bits of cherry blossom, things like that. Um, unfortunately, there's some dead badgers in the canal, but there's like birds and, you know, we passed some, some, small little ponies and stuff and you know it's just not my little ponies but but small little ponies and it's it's spring you get and bird this, song you get you this know, place looks really nice like the moorings look quite nice and mm -hmm. it's just nice and all the trees over here someone um commented on the video where i think we arrived in nottingham and we met a viewer walking past someone said how often do you get recognized well this morning we met the lock keeper who was a different lock keeper that let us up yesterday but he's the one we met when we were here last year mm -hmm. i think he was a viewer mm -hmm. yeah, he had... was a viewer and um, so it was nice to chat to him this morning and see him again and then there was two boats that went past that were viewers so and yesterday and this morning there were people in the marina who were viewers so some days it's a lot yeah <laughs> and then well i guess in lockdown it went we went months without being meeting yeah. anyone so. nobody knew who we were but... 
But yeah, it's really nice when people say hello. So if you see us, say hello. Yes, please do. And and hello to everybody we met today. Um, and yesterday. And yesterday. Because there was a woman when we arrived as well. Yeah, there were quite a few. It's been it's been lovely to meet and have a chat and and even if that chat is just um, in passing. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, the worst time is on a boat is when there's two boats moving because the conversation is just like so fleeting. Yeah. I like your videos. Nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's, especially if you're passing at any sort of speed. <laughs> but yeah, we've uh, we've made it here to Saxelby, which I completely said wrong earlier, um, and I probably said wrong now, but at least I've got the right consonants in it. And uh, yeah, it looks like quite a little pretty town. I hope so. And uh, I like the row of cherry trees on the side there. And There's a road. Um, it's not a super busy one. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be here for a few days. Yes. So, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Go get my ice cream. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Minimalist, maximal velocity, something, 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 something. Time lapse videos. And also, click that bell if you want to find out if I ever wake up again. Ooh, beautiful blue sky through giant head. Gosh, look at the sky. That is gorgeous. Yeah. Of course, I'm, you're looking at me. I'm looking at the sky. <clears throat> When your alternator Hang on. built, okay. No, it was recording. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't think it was recording. Mm -hmm.